Hello YouTube vintage stereo restorers and repairers and appreciators and those sick of hearing my voice. No, no. I wanted to talk to you about something. Every once in a while I'm working on something and I get this idea from, because you know I'm using some technique I figured out years ago or whatever, and I'm thinking people that are into this might want to know this. Because the aim is to keep the hobby and the business going. Okay, picture this. I had a 66 Ford Galaxy 500. And I was I bought it in it was August one year, August 88 I think it was. And um I was running okay, but it needed some work and I found a place to store it for the winter. And I thought I'm going to rebuild that carburetor over the winter. So I parked the car, took the battery out, took the carb off, took it home. Bought a carb kit. Any of you ever done this, right? Took the carburetor apart, cleaned all the parts and solvent, and then by that point it was Christmas time. And I'm like, I'm going to put this away for a while. Well, I put it away, but it was like five months later that I wanted to put the car back together. And here's this cardboard box of little screws and gaskets and O-rings and the needle and seat kind of rolling around in. I look at this and go, how am I supposed to get this back together? Point of me telling you this is, when I took it apart, if I would have put it back together the next day, most people have enough memory they can take something apart and put it back together the next day. But put a few months into it, you look at it and you're like, I don't believe this. I need a diagram. I need instructions. I did get the carburetor back together and it ran really well. Anyway, I'm kind of into that with this one right here. This preamp board, the phono preamp, and the, and the tone control is wired into this. I've never seen this board on another Kenwood product. It's an early version. Well, I can just show it to you on the schematic, actually. Oh, it's here. There it is. Preamp UA13241. Well, this is a 13243. It's similar. There's six transistors. Okay, I can figure that out. But the entire layout and topography is different. And what's especially different is all these parts soldered on this side. So in the later design, they made it so that they went, you know, were part of the the circuit board and went through a piece of foil and were soldered down. I got to remove a capacitor that's on the other side, but there's all this stuff right here on top of it. I already did this one. It wasn't that easy. This one I think is harder. So what I've got to do, I gotta get that one out of the way, and there's a wire and a resistor where I want to work. Well, let's see if we can get some of that solder out of there. And I'm gonna come in at an angle that I don't melt anything. Oh boy. Now well, let's go here. Let's lift the resistor first. Come on. Cut the resistor off. All right. Now, remember where that went. I got this wire out of here too. Ooh, I've only had one coffee. I'm a little shaky. There we go. Not doing too bad. Now, let's get some of the solder out of here. Hopefully, I'm not blocking it too much. It's kind of hard. What I'm going to do here... I'm going to switch hands. And I got wire tangled up in my soldering iron wire. Oh, yeah. Okay. Underneath, I got to feel out where this cap is. I think it's that one. It's that one. Go in here. And wiggle it out. Well, I got one lead out. Oh, then I got to switch this iron over. And try to get the other lead out. Here we go. Come on. Oh, I just felt the capacitor drop. Let's vacuum this out a little bit more. Move the resistor. Why did they do this? Well, they probably had some issues with this board the way it was. 
that happens. Now let's see where my capacitor went. I'm just going to swing this thing up. Bring it around so you can see it. I don't know if you're in the picture on that or not. I don't have a camera operator, so I have a Q-tip. Let's do a little wiping off here. So there's the one I'm replacing, and this is, it seems every signal cap inside this version is a 10 microfarad. Isn't that interesting? See, they maybe weren't quite into saying, well, a five would do, and it's a third of a cent cheaper over a thousand units. So that's where we came out of. No polarity markings, but I did look before, and it's in my random access memory. Doing stuff like this is in your random access memory if you were a computer. So, negative side towards the little solder land where the wire is connected. It's wrestling me to come through. Let's do this. Let's bring it back down again, and as I tip it down, I put my finger on it so it doesn't fall out. Get into the camera. I think we're in the camera there. Let's open that hole up a little bit while I gently push. There you go. Come on. There it is. Okay, now I oh, can't let go. It's going to fall out. I need my better glasses. <laughs> this close. I used to be able to do this without glasses at one time. Anyway, I'm going to chop off that lead, grab onto it so it doesn't fly anywhere, and put that one down, because that's the way they're done on these. Because the foil is weak on this design, the board, bend them down like they originally were. I know it's a pain to get them out later, but this little solder island right here, that all this stuff is attaching to, it needs all the help it can get to remain on the board. So we bend that one down. Now we want to get these leads back on. Let's see here. So I want to do, let's put the wire under that lead. And this was just on top like that and slightly to the side so it's not so what you really want here is a good mechanical connection so to speak you want everything held down as you solder what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that lead down with a little bit of force that's it now I gotta get back in there and solder this thing let's clean off the tip I don't leave much residue behind. <laughs> what can I clean off with? Some bubble wrap? <laughs> the, my uh, tip cleaning sponge just kind of fell apart. I haven't replaced it. Anyway, we're going to come in from this side. I'm going under this resistor and I'm flowing in. And see, everything stayed in place. The wire, and I believe that actually goes to the mono stereo switch, that wire. The wire is held in, the resistor is held down, the capacitor is in on the other side. We can tip this one up. Okay, let's do the final solder. Switch hands. You're going to have to guess which handed I am. Okay, so we've done it. I'll just uh, flip it up. You may not be able to see this, I'm not sure. But there it is. And there's only one, two, three, four more and two transistors to replace. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope that helps you out.